Has there ever been a time in history in which purposefully stoking racial divisions led to anything good? With me now to discuss the dangers of all of this is Mike Gonzalez, a senior fellow at the Heritage Foundation and the author of The Plot to Change America, How Identity Politics is Dividing the Land of the Free. Welcome back, Mike. Hi, Kara. How are you? I really endorse all your strong words on the subject. Thanks so much, Mike. And in your latest piece at the New York Post, you say that Biden preaches unity but practices division. Talk to me about some of the troubling aspects of his new executive orders regarding race relations in America. Yeah, we have to be very clear about this. To most Americans, when they hear the word equity, they would think it means equality. And in fact, equity does mean equality when properly used. However, the left and the left is in charge, I think, for the moment, at least in this part of the Biden administration, has corrupted the the word equity. And to them, equity means unequal treatment. Unequal treatment of Americans according to whatever category the government has put you in. Whatever marginalized category the government has created for you, you deserve unequal treatment as a member of it. And that is Kamala, Kamala Harris has been very clear about this. She had a tweet on November 1st in which she said equality and equity are very different. No, they're not. But we have to understand that to the Biden administration, it is. That executive order that you talked about, I've I've been reading it a lot and writing a lot about it, mentions the word equity 21 times. You know how many times it mentions the word equality? Zero. And Biden himself cannot read these words off the teleprompter fast enough. And once this week, he actually made a mistake. And he was about to say the word equality. And he stopped and he corrected himself and he repeated the magic word equity. It is because it's about unequal treatment. And your listeners and all Americans need to understand this. And if you were to listen to Biden or to Harris, they would say that they're doing this to help the downtrodden in America. However, as you write that these policies, they actually help the wealthy liberal elite. That is right. This is not going to help anybody. This is it's going to lead to more usage of of, of the disparate impact doctrine, which leads policymakers to seek numerical proportionalism in the outcome of policies that produces unjust policies, you know, wastes, it's, 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 it's a waste of resources. And, and, and it actually can lead to tragic circumstances, such as, for example, you know, confine itself at the heart of the Parkland shooting, the, 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 the dear colleague letter that Obama wrote. A lot of people are looking at the impact of that disparate impact policy on, on letting people you know, escape uh, uh, detention or punishment. Now, I have to emphasize again that this usage of the word equity, and they're very clear about it. If you read Ibram X. Kendi, the, the BU professor, he says very clearly that he wants discrimination. Equity leads to discrimination and unequal treatment. So nobody should look at the word equity and think, well, it means the same thing as equality or something close to it. No, 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 they're sworn enemies. And when you're talking about Ibram X. Kendi, he's someone who wants to use and weaponize the DOJ against Americans and their business and their schooling to do what he calls racial equity. And it's interesting now as well that we're seeing some experts, so-called at the New York Times and elsewhere in the mainstream media, and they're saying that they're pressuring Biden to do something similar, to start uh, to create a new office of the reality czar, to basically monitor uh, the news feeds, to monitor online social media chatter, and to really make the nation conform even more. Is that where we're heading? Well, there is a certain push uh, to by the left to quash free speech. The left doesn't like free speech. Because it, it can't compete, I guess, in the mark in the free market of ideas. So uh, it used to be that liberals used to demand free speech. Now it's all turned around, and and it is it, it's the application of Marcuse's uh, Herbert Marcuse's repressive tolerance, an essay he wrote in 1966, saying we cannot with repressive tolerance we cannot um, accept conservative ideas. Now we're seeing people trying to put that into practice. Mike, I always really appreciate your insight. Thank you so much for joining us tonight. Thanks for watching the Heritage Foundation's YouTube channel. With more than half a million members, we are the nation's largest conservative research and education institution. 
We believe the principles and ideas of the American founding are worth conserving and renewing. Please help us further our mission by subscribing to this channel and sharing our videos with your family and friends.